Hello once again and today we'll be doing a C++ program and the program we'll be tackling today is called the binary gap and we'll be using the, the algorithm to sort that out. It's a favorite amongst employers, especially when you are interviewing to be an intern. This is one of those um, simple programs that you should be able to do after taking a, your first C++ class. Okay, we have our headers here and our main instantiation. So we'll continue get some values in there. All right, that's gonna be our test string. And if you don't know what binary gap is, like say it's for this um, string, the largest the largest gap would of zeros would be here. So it should return four zeros. That would be the largest gap. And the gap has to be bookend by two ones. So ones at both ends, one leading and one trailing. Okay, um, if it's something like this, then the largest gap will be three here, as you can see, and not these zeros here, because there's no one at the end. All right, so let's put that back. I think that's what it was. All right, so we're gonna put in some variables that we'll be needing. All right, then we are gonna put in a nice for loop. That we'll be using today. I'm just gonna put in the whole thing and then we can um, work out what it's doing. Not necessary, but we'll put it in there. All right, so we have the for loop that's gonna go through each string. We'll be doing this in place so we don't have to create any vectors or anything, any arrays. We'll be doing this in place. So here we have. Um, we're using this for each loop. X, let's go through this. X is going to be up here at your first position. That's going to be one. And if that's a one, then and the count equals zero. The count is going to um, accumulate our zeros. It's going to, all right, it's going to accumulate the zero counts. Um, so here, if, if, uh, X is one and the count is zero, then we want to start because we're here. We have a one, that's where you want to actually, that's when you want to start the count. So we start count, we set start count to true and we increment the index. The index is what's going to keep our pointer in the right position. Uh, so index increments to one, that's gonna, index tells us well where, where in the string we are. Okay, we, so we have that one. Once it goes up again to the for loop, it grabs the next character. It, that would be, in this case, a zero. It skips this first one. It comes to this if else statement here. If x is zero and the start count is true, then increment the count because that's accumulating our zero count. And then increment the index that goes to the next keeps track of the next uh, character. All right, in this case, it's a zero, so it's gonna count. That zero count is gonna get incremented, index is gonna get incremented, then it's gonna go back up. It's gonna grab the next zero in position. It's gonna come here again. It's gonna increment count. It's gonna grab the next zero, increment count, grab the next zero, increment count. Then it's gonna come and it's gonna see this one here. Then if it sees that one, then it comes down um, to this elf statement, sees the other one. So it's not gonna go in here obviously because count is not equal to zero. Count is no longer equal to zero. So it's gonna go down here to this if else statement where the value in the string that we're looking at is one and start count is true, right? So if the value, so here's where we are gonna put the, the, the value into um here's where we're going to put the value into our container to hold the value out right um here all right so if the value is less than count we're going to put count in the value um this is basic c plus uh, plus to find the largest number that's usually one of the first types of for loops you get trained on 
So that should be straightforward. And then here is where we're going to reset count to zero. And we're going to increment the index again because there might be some more. We don't know. And in, case, in this case, there is some more. We increment the count to zero. All right, start count is still true. We're going to leave that as true because we're on another one. We see another one there. So it goes back up again. It sees the zero. Uh, um, okay, so count is zero. So it goes back up again. It comes to the beginning of the, the if, st if statement. It says, okay, so I see that X is one and the count has been reset to zero. So we this condition has been met. So we are going to go in here. We're going to hit start count as true again, which is redundant because it's, 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 um, it's already true on the first go around. And we're going to increment the index to the next. All right. Then it goes and it does it all over again until it gets to the end. Well, in this case, it will get to uh, this one. It would have saved these zeros here. It would have saved all of those zeros here. One, two, three, four, five. That would be large, larger than the current value, that number five. So count will be five. Value on the last go around was three. Is count larger than three? Yes, it is. So it's going, it's going to save count to value. So count now becomes five. And um, that's it. So the largest value so far we have is five. Let's run this program and see how it works. Largest zero. We'll do a G plus plus. Largest gap. That CPP. We'll create an executable and we'll call it, let's call it like LGE, let's call it LGE. All right, program compile, good. And we are going to run it. So <clears throat> the, the answer is largest, zero gap is five, which is correct. All right, we have five here, five zeros. One, two, three, four, five. Five zero. So let's see if this can this um, case would work. At the end there, we have we have no trailing one. So let's see if that works. The result should be three. Should be the largest gap. There it is. Three. Three is the largest gap. All right. Um, there's another thing that you have to do. I'm just gonna get right into it. It's pretty simple. But it's possible that they can give you the number as an integer. Let's say uh, 256. They could give you the number as an integer in x equal 256. All right. And so for this, um, let's create a, let's create a um, function that would take care of that okay i already created the function i'm just gonna paste it in there okay that's the function that's going to take care of it so we are going to be passing let us <clears throat> let's us say binary and we are going to we want to pass it as a string oh wait we could pass it as an integer actually okay Let's pass it as an integer. I will return a string. All right. So in this case, they may ask you to um, find the largest gap, but they'll give you an integer. So what you have to do in this, this case, you have to create your binary string from that integer. And that is exactly what this um, function is doing is creating a binary string so we can work on it um, so it comes in here we have this variable called bits here set it to zero <clears throat> right so if x is zero this is a condition that represents zeros if it sees a zero we just want to quit out of the program if it's a zero is no sense moving forward if the integer is a zero all right, that's what this does. If it's not a zero, if it's a proper a positive integer, then 
while the integer is greater than zero we'll be doing some operations on it to extract the ones and the zeros so bits equal bits bits is set to the character zero bits is set to the character zero no here sorry oh sorry bits is set to empty an empty string all right so bits equals to string x x is our integer mod modded by two so it will return either a one or a zero that's how you do binary conversions if you don't know now you know simple just keep in mind if you have to convert an integer to a binary you are going to be using modul modulus modulo all right and we are using bitwise and operator in this case because it's faster bitwise is really fast if it's a big number it's a huge number and you just say maybe uh, divide by two if you keep dividing by two divided by two that's slow bitwise operations are very 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 fast very extremely fast compared to say doing some sort of arithmetic all right so we are basically what this bitwise operation is saying if you don't know is half the number every time so if you're shifting by one you are basically having the number shifting to the right by one you are having the number every time all right so that's how we ex turn a binary number a a base 10 number digit to a binary number and i'm going to just see out the binary what we got to confirm that the binary is correct and this is just going to send back the binary representation of the decimal number it's back to the main program for processing and it's just going to follow through to the rest of the of the program like i said earlier all right let's run this so let's have i have a number i worked out two 281 let's say 281 oh so what am i doing let's compile it and let's run it okay so we have the number the binary number is backwards right it's backwards so the most significant bit is to your right okay if you want to if you're more comfortable flipping it uh, uh with it uh with the most significant bit to the left then you'd have to flip the, the string i'm not sure if there's a function to do that but you'll have to flip it but we're doing the gap so it doesn't matter when you're doing the gap all right doesn't matter where the gap is as long as you can identify the the largest gap and the amount of zeros in the largest gap so it doesn't matter the orientation doesn't matter so in this case it's correct the gap is one here because there is no zeros among this so the gap is indeed one all right let's try make sure that this edge case is the zero case is working let's put a zero in there it should just return a zero return a zero so the gap is zero all right let's do some more let's put um let's put like a 256 which should return zero because there's only one one in there i don't know if you know how to if you know we should know binary numbers by now make sure that works zero all right here is the binary number that we the function return and there's no gaps in there that's correct and that's your binary gap algorithm. There's actually a much better algorithm that's really elegant and very short. I'm going to do that on another video. This is actually the long way to do it. There's a really short way to do it. It involves a, a getting a vector. So, you know, you have that, you know, here is just processing. Everything is in in end time depends on on how much um 
we have to do this because we're doing bitwise operations and stuff like that it's really quick you know so to do this in place to do a large number in place happens really quickly because we're using bitwise operation but there's another way to do it and i will show you that way very simple very elegant that will be in the next video thank you bye